Well, as you can guess right now where I'm at, I'm in a, in a car doing all this review because I could not do this last night. As I always say, certain times in the weekend, wrestling gets a little chaotic because I'm watching a whole bunch of them. Sometimes it's a longer and I don't get the chance to do that. But I decided to do it for you guys right now and get it over with. So for today, we're going to be doing Choco Pro 352 with three interesting matches taking place but also we move on as you know it is 2024 tna is back with their latest pay-per-view hard to kill all titles are now defended we do have an ultimate x match in the knockouts division and plenty other surprises that took place on this pay-per-view but also we have aew collision as you know we have some interesting matches that taking place including of course the the battle between the House of Black and members of FTR and Daniel Garcia taking them on. And then we move on with AEW's Battle of the Belts 9. We have three championships defended. The AEW International Championship, the TBS title, and the tag team titles in a street fight. And then we cap it up with some news updates. So we got a bit of a shorter one, but it's okay. We're going to be getting through everything. So let's get ready for another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to the Lead It Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling, such as AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, TNA, and NWA, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay Rod here. So, if you are new to the channel, welcome. This is a channel where we do a lot of pro wrestling reviews, not only here in the United States, but also in Japan, Mexico, Canada. Europe, the UK, anywhere in the world where pro wrestling is not as big, but it continues to grow. We also do discussion videos such as topics like the wrestlers themselves, promotions, factions, storylines, whatever we want to talk about. We also do some more news updates. If I'm unable to put it on this episode, I can put it on a separate episode by itself. We also do some real timing news updates. If something happens as soon as I hear it, I'll let you guys know right away. We also other do cool stuff on this channel as well. So if you like what you see, please subscribe to us. So click on that subscribe button. You'll be getting a lot of daily reviews and other cool stuff as well. Or if you like this episode, please give us a like on the like button or a nice comment in the description down below. Now, <coughs> let's begin with our very first review. This is from Choco Pro. This is number 352. Uh, this is just re much... Uh, latest <coughs> show to do it opened up but of course like always she opening up the show for everyone having a great time giving a lowdown on the matches and everything else now we have members of a group known as the honozawa goon which is momoka hanazono's uh, unit from the independence in osaka so anyway all three members actually showed up including momoka hanazono so that's something we are going to be seeing now, first match, we have Nonoka Seto. She teams up with Tokiko Kirahara. They take on uh, Masakita Mia and, no, Masa um, Takanashi and Emi Sakura. Now, it's obvious that we're going to see this, but however, um, I'm not sure how Nonoka is because, you know, I'm sure she's a little uh, saddened that her sister's out for a little while due to the fact that she injured herself, but I know she'll do good. I mean, I've seen uh, Nonoka with the fighting spirit like she refused to show up she throws in a bit of the aggressiveness that did help up a bit but however that did not do any good whatsoever for her she even tried to do the maestral on emi sakura but emi sakura countered it and put it into a pinfall one two three it was over just like that 
Our next match, we have a bit of a three-way. We have Antonio Honda versus Chon Chiru and, of course, a member of the Hanazono Goon, um, Harutoki. Now, I don't know much about Harutoki, but he seems like a pretty cool wrestler. But, however, when it comes to Antonio Honda and Chon Chiru, you know that there's going to be something interesting because, of course, with <coughs> Honda... You know he'll try to put a little bit of the comedy routine in his matches, but it didn't do any good. But however, Chun Chiru was not there to play. But however, Harutoki, he was very interesting. Don't know much about him, but he did his part. However, it was, of course, Chun Chiru with a Mahestral onto uh, Honda to pick up the win. Now, our main event, we have the best bros, Mei Shruga and Balinaki. They team up with... Momoka Hanazono, which is going to be interesting because those who may or may not know, Mei Shuga and ha uh, Momoka Hanazono, they have teamed up on various occasions in, Oza in, um, in Oz Academy. They're known as Momo Ringo. However, this, I'm like, they're both predictable and they're both terrors in the ring. I don't know how Balanaki will do deal with this because he already has to put up with uh, Mei Shuga shenanigans. But when it comes to Momoka Hanazono, Forget it. She is on a different level. So I'm sure he'll deal with that himself. However, he has to deal contempt with Sayaka, Sayako Bihiro, and of course another member of the Hanazono goon, and that is of course um what's his name? Uh, Michiko um Kayagami. So basically we're gonna have the opposite members. But I thought it was a pretty good match, but not to mention, as I always say. You got Momoka Arizona and Mei Shuga, both terrors in the ring. That's always been their deal. But however, of course Momoka Arizona was going to bring a bit of the aggressiveness. And of course that little smile of hers where she tries to be all of a smart ass as always. And she even brought in the confetti gun and it worked in every, in every way possible. <laughs> but I just love it. But in the end, it was of course Mei Shuga picked up the win when she pinned Obihiro. And that was it. Yo, oh. the final thing they need to do is, of course, the Jonkin tournament. I was a bit of surprised that no one from the best bros make it through. But I've been curious how is the Hanazono Goon people will, will do. Well, they did okay, but they did not make it all the way through. But I can tell you this, the person who did make it all the way through and won the entire chocolate, and that is, of course, Sayaka. Well, I'm always happy to see it, Sayaka too. To win, so I'm okay with that. Now, in the after show, Balinaki uh, revealed that he, along with Mei Shruga and Balinaki, will be doing a tour in India. So this is rather interesting. Now, those who may have been aware or not, Balinaki is originally from India, and of course, all of that. I know he did a seminar in a wrestling school down there. I'm not sure if that's the um, the Great Kali School or, or another promotion. That's something I'm not aware of, but I'm not sure 100%. But it's great that they will be going to another country. Hopefully, we could see more people from India head to way to Japan. That's something we could see down the line. So, who knows? But for right now, I think we're done with Choco Pro. Let's move on with TNA Hard to Kill. Okay, as you all know, 2024 is a big year. It's the return of TNA. We're all so happy. But let's start with the countdown to Hard to Kill. Our first match, we have Rich Swan versus Steve Macklin. Now, this is no secret. These two have met countless times. But however, how, who was going to get the first win in TNA in 2024? Well, I can tell you that turned out to be Steve Macklin when he applied, of course, to KIA and it was over. But... C. Macklin was interviewed during the countdown where he talked to, of course, um, no, yeah, t uh, later on in the entire hard kill. Uh, he talked about he got the first win, that he's going to make the, the the new era of mayhem. So I'm sure T Steve Macklin will probably go back to the very conversation to hopefully regain the, the world title that he lost. So only time will tell. Now, Gia Miller did an interview with Moose, Eddie Edwards, Alicia Edwards, Brian Myers, and a guy who is a NFL running back named 
Angela Williams. And it turns out, as you know, they're now forming a unit calling themselves the system. So basically, as you know, there's uh, Myers and Eddie will be in a in a tag match in the countdown. Alicia Edwards will be in the knockouts ultimate X match. But as for Moose, he will get his opportunity for the world title. So we'll see what happens then. And then, of course, in the ring, we have DJ Wu Kid uh, along with AJ Francis. Of course, nobody was happy to see AJ Francis until he's interrupted with Say his name and he appears. I believe in Joe Hendry. Yeah, he showed up. And his usual shenanigans with I like to make music and make a video. But of course, like any other, they're not going to be happy. But AJ Francis decided, you know, beat the crap out of Joe Hendry. That's exactly what he did. He beat him up and all that. And then <coughs> afterwards... He talked that he's not going to take any crap from anybody, no matter what. So I'm sure we'll see that at some point. So let's move on. Now, second match <coughs> in the countdown, we have, of course, the system. Eddie Edwards and Brian Myers. They take on uh, Frankie Kazarian and um, Eric Young, who are, you know perfectly well, TNA Originals, which is, of course, something we known for many years. Now, how you think they were going to do? I have to say... They did a pretty good job, but however, there are certain factors that would play out because, of course, Myers would try to find ways to, of course, to pick up a win. But it was, of course, Eddie Edwards versus the Boston Knee Party that put away Frankie Kazarian and ended the match like that. Now, our last match in the countdown, we have the TNA Digital Media title defended in a no DQ match. We have Tommy Dreamer. Defending a title against Crazy Steve. Now, we know they have faced each other before. But, however, that match was a disaster. This led to that. But, however, Steve took out all the plunder you can think of. He even bounded Tommy Dreamer in with his hands not to escape. But he even applied the Belladonna as a final um, move. But, he, in fact, after pulling off the Belladonna, he actually wins the digital media title. So... That's pretty interesting to see. Let's see where he goes with this title. Now, let's jump into our very first <coughs> match in the main card. We have the Knockouts Ultimate X. Now, this is not the first time they've done it, but we do have some wrestlers that made their way. We have Tasha Steeles, as you all know, who is one of the first experienced wrestlers involved in the Ultimate X. And the very first winner is in this match. We have Giselle Shaw. Versus Alicia Edwards. As you know, Alicia it was involved in the first ever Knockouts Ultimate X match. Then we have Jody Thread versus Danny Luna versus the debut of Zaya Brookside. Yes, Zaya Brookside was involved. Now, keep in mind, the Ultimate X is a very physical demanding type of match. This is where, of course, this is no pinfall, no submission. It's all strategy. Just get on top of the rope, retrieve the X, but your feet must land to the ground. So, of course, there were going to be many times that we're going to see that. But, however, towards the end, we did see Giselle Shaw, Danny Luna, and someone else try to get the X. But, in the end, it was Giselle Shaw who picked up <coughs> the win. Now, she could get her match for the Knockouts title at any time, any place of her choosing. So, we will see when that day comes. Because, as you know, we do have the Knockouts title defended. So, we'll get to that as soon enough. Now, our next match, we have Dirty Dango versus PCO. Now, this match did not go as well as we thought because uh, we have Bravo who was getting involved. So is Oleg uh, Prudis. However, as soon as that happened, Rhino showed up to give him the, the helping hand. And then, of course, here comes the director of authority who thought, ah, 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 not going to happen on my watch. So he said that this match will restart as a tag match. But however, he didn't say it was going to be two on two. So it's going to be a three on three. So the obvious question does tell. Okay, we see the three individuals involved. We see Bravo. We see Dango and Brutus. Who is the third man siding with Rhino and uh, what's his name? And PCO. Well, it turned out it was Jake something. And I think that was a very interesting one. If you guys remember clearly, there was a bit of a beef between Dango and um What's his name? And Jake something until Oleg Brutus showed up, cost them 
everything. But it would make sense on that. So this is a bit of payback, I'm sure. But it did restart it. And of course, there was going to be PCO salts everywhere. But unfortunately, um, Bravo was the one who ended up on the wrong side of the of the PCO salt. So not bad for a win. A great start for PCO in 2024, if I like to say. Now, as soon as the match over, we go outside of the venue and we see a mysterious car show up. And then here comes a mysterious figure. We didn't know who it was, so it was a blonde person. However, Matthew Renroll, who was there as commentator, was saying that he knows who it is. He said he heard whispers, rumors, and all that. So he wasn't going to say anything. So we will get to that in a bit. Now, the TNA Knockouts Tag Team titles are on the line. We have MK Ultra defending the belts, but against a mysterious team. And we were surprised to see who it was. Yep. I did not expect it. I'm sure many of you did not expect it. Those who haven't don't know, you should know. It became the K. That's right. Jessica and Rosemary are back. I was a bit of surprised. I, no one's heard from them. But seeing the K back, I think it would make more sense. And I think it was a real fun. But my favorite moment of this match is between Rosemary and Killer Kelly. But in the end, of course, it was uh, Jessica who picked up the win by pinning uh, Masha. One, two, three is over. So I think 2024 <coughs> start out great for the K. And I thought, wow, not bad. Not bad at all. Now, in the, in the stage of the in the stage area, we saw Scott Demore coming out, as you know, talking about TNA. However, he made some interesting news, and this is something I think many TNA fans have been aware of for years. As you know, they had a great working relationship with AAA for a long time. So, however, they decided to permanently make it into a partnership. So they brought in Doria Peña, who is in fact one of the owners of. Triple <coughs> A, and of course, Dorian is a big fan of TNA, and not to mention he appreciates fans who are fans of Lucha Libre. So he would like to see more of his talent coming to their turf, and I think that's a great thing. Now I know some of you may say, doesn't Triple A have a working relationship with AW? They do. I'm sure that there will be certain factors why, but we'll get to that at some point in down the road about that. Now, speaking of AAA wrestlers, as you know, we have one of them participating in the X Division title match, and we have Hijo del Vinquingo, our current uh, and the longest reigning AAA Mega Champion. Sh champion. He takes on Kushida versus the champion uh, Saban. Now, this match was unbelievably crazy. Great spots, not to mention a lot of high flying and all this other stuff. That is one of those reasons I love Lucha Libre a bit, and th this is why I became a fan of TNA because. I love the X Division. Uh, the X Division. I think it's a. Pr I think I like to call it the more extreme um, version of the cruiserweight division. So I thought it was. But of course, you got to be more careful with Hill Vikingo because you know what he'll do. When you see something cool with him, you'll say, "Holy shit!" That's exactly what he did. But however, Kushida, on the other hand, was the one who ended up on the wrong side of the cradle shock, making sure that Chris Sabin retained the X Division title. So, he retains it, but we'll see who will be the next challenger. Now, our next match, this is a great match, I have to say. A great battle. Alexander Hammerstone versus Josh Alexander. These two guys are amazing. Former longer reigning champions in their respective time. Of course, you saw uh, Hammerstone, the longest national openweight champion and world heavyweight champion, NMLW, Josh Alexander, longest reigning Impact Wrestling Champion or TNH World Champion. But that sets out pretty well. I wasn't too sure, but it was a great match. I'd say I recommend you guys should see this one. And of course, who walks out the victor? Well, the victor turns out to be Josh Alexander. When he applied the C4 spike, it was over. So it's like, good night, Irene. Next up, we have um, a work. The TNA World Tag Team titles defended. We have, of course, um, the Rascals, who demanded a rematch for this one, so they got it. Uh, we were supposed to have Trent Seven and Mike Bailey involved, but however, due to some travel issues, Trent Seven was unable to do it. Uh, so his replacement turned out to be uh, Laredo Kid, but however, 
commentators made it perfectly clear, and I have to agree, Mike Bailey can adapt with anybody who, who he teams up with. So that kind of sets it all. So it's Mike Bailey and Laredo Kid. And then we have, of course, the debut of Grizzled Young Veterans. James Drake and Zach Gibson. I thought it was great to see them there, too. Then, of course, the current champions, the ABC, Chris Bay and <coughs> Ace Austin. You know this is going to be interesting. A lot of things were going to happen. But the real question is <coughs> how this was going to end. We know that they don't need to pin ABC in it. It happened before in, um, in Slammiversary. But we will see where that leads us. But you can expect a whole lot. But in the end, it was the one, two, one, two. Sweet! That made the final deal when they took out Trey Miguel and ABC retained the titles. I was like, great. But I would love to see the ABC versus the Grizzled Young Veterans. What do you guys think? Would you like to see that match? I know I would like to see that match. So only time will tell. So we'll find out in the future. Now, before our, our the Knockouts uh, Championship begins, we saw the surprising figure showing up, and it turned out to be Ash by Elegance, formerly known as Dana Brooks. This was a bit of a surprise. Now, they haven't said anything if she is now signed with, a, with TNA. I'm sure she will be. However, uh, one thing that I really felt like, I felt there was a ripoff here, and I think some of you may not like it, they try to make her look more, a bit more like Tony Storm. But, I don't know. I feel like there's a ripoff here. But her name, Ash by Elegance, that's a weird name. So, but, nonetheless, I'm happy to see her. But the real question is, where, will, where, where do we go from here? But, right now, we know she was there to pay attention to the Knockouts world title taking place. We have Jordan Grace, as you know, who is the winner of the uh, Call Your Shot Gauntlet match. Called a shot for a hard to kill. I thought it was great. They take on Trinity. You know, this is a very interesting match that was going to be like because I wasn't too sure where this is going to go. I mean, Trinity has been a great, a great champion since she proved herself her worth. I mean, she didn't ask for any demands or anything. She had to earn it. As for Jordan Grace, she fought to get what she wanted, and that's exactly what it is. But in the end, it was, of course, the juggernaut, uh, Jordan Grace, who picked up the win by applying the Juggernaut Driver, and it was over. Brand new um, Knockouts World Champion. However, we know that the, she has a target on her back, so Jordan Grace has to pay attention towards Giselle Shaw, who will probably cash in her, her title match at any time in any given place. But also, I'm sure Ash by uh, Elegance will be keeping an eye on this closely. Now, our final match, our main event, is the TNA World title. Moose versus jo um, Alex Shelley. Great match. I thought it was a pretty great. There was no helping hand from anything. But I have to say, Moose really proved his worth as he, a, a pure athlete. But in the end, it was his spear that put away Alex Shelley and then regaining the TNA World title. And, of course, the system comes out to celebrate. But out of nowhere, in the post-match... Music starts, but not Moose's music. It was Nick Menneth showed up. He showed up and attacked Moose. And then after that, he takes off his shirt and has the TNA. So it looks more like he is now in TNA. And I think many of us were surprised. Recently, we just saw him in New Japan. And now TNA, we're like, where is the world going to with this? I'm looking forward to seeing more of Nick Menneth. I'm sure many of you are too. So sooner or later, there's going to be some interesting developments on that. So we'll stay close to Nick Mennett's story a little closely until more information comes out. But right now, let's move on with AEW Collision. Okay, AEW Collision. Now, it starts out with Adam Copeland putting out an open challenge. The challenge was accepted by none other than, well, representing this person, Shane Taylor. With Shane Taylor Promotions, he introduced Tiger Style, Lee Moriarty. Now, of course, this was going to be a very interesting type of match because, as you know, Lee Moriarty is a very impressive technical wrestler. Will he able to pin uh, Adam Copeland? That is the very question. 
But of course, I knew that Shane Taylor was going to get involved to ensure this match goes in Lee Moriarty. But however, he got speared out of his out of his pants off. But in the end, it wasn't the spear that put away Lee Moriarty. It was a crossface. It was a very impressive win. So right now, Adam Copeland, starting from here and out, he is 2-0. So we'll see how far he'll go in his this little open challenge. Now, we do see a bit of interviews coming up with uh, Lexi Nier. The first one is with FTR and Daniel Garcia. They are in the main event to take on the House of Black. As you know, their issues towards them has still rose. But the obvious question does tell is FTR, can they coexist with Daniel Garcia? I'm sure that they will, but we'll see what happens until then. Now, the next interview, we have Jericho and Sammy Guevara. As you know, they are ready for their match at Battle of the Belts against Starks and in Big Bill, so we'll see where that leads us there too. Now our next match is the ROH World Six Man Tag Team Titles. We have Lance Archer and the Righteous Butch and Vincent taking on the Mogul Embassy, Brian Cage, Tail Leona, and Bishop Khan. Now this became a bit of a revenge for Lance Archer for what happened in Dynamite. Who can blame him? But a lot of things took place. You probably would assume this would have been a very interesting match, but towards the end it was well. There was a moment where Nana tried to get involved, but he got DDT'd by Jake the Snake, so that's what he gets for getting involved. But however, but it was, of course, a somewhat of a pedigree by Bishop Khan to Vincent the help of the Mogul Embassy retain the titles. However, during the post-match, Prince Nana issued a challenge to the Bullet Club Gold. This was interesting. I did not expect it to them. They said they were hearing them, that they were going to obtain gold and all this. I'm sure they're trying to prove that they are the most dominant faction right now. But if I was them, I would be careful because they have been a very cohesive team. So, But later we did see the Bullet Club gold. They did hear what, they, what Prince Nana said. So they accepted the challenge this Wednesday. So we will see where that leads us from there here and out. Now, uh, our next interview by Rene Paquette, we, well, Lexi, actually, we have Preston Vance. As you know, he will be at the Battle of the Belts facing Orange Cassidy for his title. And here comes Roderick Strong, tried to, uh, how do I say, saying, telling him good luck. But Preston Vance was not feeling this at all. So he told him that he doesn't need his luck. And this is, was supposed to be his moment. But however, he told him that he if he does win this title, that he's going to put the title on against him I don't know what Roderick Strong is trying to do but however it's not good our next match we have Willie Mack versus Dusty Rhodes not a much of a big deal but a pretty good match but it was Dusty Rhodes with an interesting pinfall onto Willie Mack to pick up the win but we did see him you know have an interview and here comes that idiot Christian Cage to get in his face and all this talking about his dad but he was said that he'll come for the TNT title, which is something he has long desired. So basically, <laughs> we'll see when that day happens. Oh, hold on. Our next match, we have Hangman Page versus J.D. Drake. First time ever these guys get to meet. However, J.D. Drake is a much bigger individual than Hangman. How will this uh, play out? Well, we know that he's a tough bastard. That's something we are aware of but of course Anthony Henry will get involved at some point that's something that was no secret but it was going to be like that I mean a hangman tried the buckshot lariat uh did not work but however once uh he took care of um Henry he tried the buckshot lariat again and it put him away so that le leads to hangman page but of course the storyline does not end with him because as you know he will continue to go into war against uh, none other than Swerve Strickland. Now, we have the in-ring debut of Deanna Perrazzo in AW, taking on the collision debut of Red Velvet. So, how will this play out? I have to say, I don't think it matters because we know these ladies can kick, can th uh, throw in a pretty good match, but we all know Deanna Perrazzo, her background as the Virtuosa, one of the most amazing technical wrestlers we've seen for a long time. So it was, of course, uh, we, they call it the master of the Fujiara armbar. But the one thing that made her more famous is the Dumble armbar. That kind of sets it out. And, of course, Red Velvet had no other choice. So 
you can say it's self-explanatory or something like that. I don't know. But yes. Now let's call this next match a squash match. We have Hook versus Kevin Matthews. Uh, he knew that Kevin Matthews was coming for him, but he missed <coughs> until he put him with the red run. So basically he will be facing Samoa Joe this Wednesday at Dynamite. So I'm sure that's going to be an interesting match. Now our main event, we have the House of Black versus... Um, Daniel Garcia and FTR. We know this match was going to be interesting and the feud between both sides is going to rage on. But how is this going to play out? Well, there were some pretty good uh, moments, but in the end, it was Buddy Matthews with the curb stump onto um, Cash Wheeler, Dax Harwood, to end the match, and it was over in their favor. But however, they decided to, for no apparent reason, Daddy Magic, who was at the commentary, did not do anything wrong. He was just there supporting his friend, giving his insight. But the House of Black grabbed him, wanted to break him, but luckily FTR and Daniel Garcia got some um, toy, some hardware to take them down. So the obvious question is, is this over between them? I don't think so. So we'll see what happens from here and out. I think that's pretty much it with AEW Collision. I believe it's time for Battle of the Belts. Okay, Battle of the Belts. Now, if you guys are unfamiliarized, every certain times of, of the year, there'll be moments where challenges are being made for certain uh, championship belts in AEW. In this case, we have three. Now, our first one is the AEW World Tag Team Titles in a street fight. We have Les Sex Gods, Sammy Guevara and Chris Jericho taking on Big Bill and Chris uh, and Big, Big Bill and Jericho Starks. Now, this whole thing happened after... Um, Jericho and Kenny Omega won the uh, defeat the Bucks for the right to challenge for the AW Tag Team Titles. However, Starks uh, were not going to take that likely. But however, due to circumstances, Kenny Omega is out due to a injury. But however, Chris Jericho thought maybe we should do this when he reunited with Sammy. I have to say, what a match! There was a great moment with Sammy. I think all of you saw he went used the wall, did like a flip off of it, and then super kick. Uh, Big Bill, I thought that was amazing, and then of course he brought in, brought in this firing signature. So they were everywhere around the arena. However, one thing we did not expect is the Don Callis family to get involved once again. Takeshita whacked Jericho with the kendo stick, while Big Bill went through a table with Jericho, and of course Sammy, who's known to be crazy, went to the highest moment to take out Ricky Starks. He went right through the platform. But Ricky Starks was moved out of the way with the surprising of Hobbs. Yes, Hobbs showed up. And, of course, this led to the loss of Jericho and Sammy. Now that they have the contempt with the Don Callis family, once again getting involved in their business. I wouldn't be surprised if they decide to get involved in theirs. So we will see what happens until then. Now, our next match, we have Anna Jay and Julia Hart. Now, these two ladies know each other way too well. They used to be good friends. They used to team up on certain occasions. Of course, Jul um, Anna Jay has not been very okay with Julia Hart being brainwashed with the whole, you know, dark side, that sort of thing. I'd say Anna Jay is in a good moment where she now needs to rise to the occasion. And this is... I know she has been with the AEW Women's title before, but never won it. Now the, T the TBS title, that's going to be a little different. But in the end, it would didn't do any good for her. She came up short after her Julia Hart applied the Heartless, and that sent a direct message saying that the house always wins. Now, recently we've been seeing the Dick Watts in uh, this Disillusion. We're talking about Jared Lethal, Karen... Sanjay ended up saying, arguing amongst each other about getting back to the winning ways. It seems now Jared doesn't trust Lethal and all this and that. So who knows where this is going to go. I'm sure that this is going to, we could see a match between Jar uh, Jared and Lethal somewhere down the line. So we will see what happens until then. Now our main event is the AEW International title. We have pra uh, Preston Vance taking on Orange Cassidy. However, members of the Undisputed Kingdom showed up. Roderick Strong uh, and, of course, Mike Bennett and Matt Taven. They were going to be there to surprise. However, I like to say how Preston Vance has been showing 
promising. I mean, the guy is a strong SOB. But unfortunately, Vrance is still pissed that they get involved in his business. What he did, he captured uh, Orange Cassidy. And of course, on this he's like, yeah, that's a great job to do it. And then he tossed Orange Cassidy to them. Of course, now he had no right to do that. Of course he had a right. They interrupted his moment. They act like, oh, you're on his side. No, 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 no. You try to steal Vance's moment. But of course, uh, it didn't do any well for Vance because, of course, Orange Cassidy is no idiot. He knows that they're there. But Preston Vance, who got in their face, might might have cost them the, the match because Orange Cassidy applied the orange punch and then the beach break, allowing them to win. However, in the post-match, the Undisputed Kingdom showed up but they beat down Jose and Preston Vance. They had Orange Cassidy surrounded. However, while they were being surrounded, they were um, Orange Cassidy had some help from very uh, uh, interesting people. Danny Garcia and FTR and Adam Copeland. I'm like, what a great moment. So <laughs> it was really fun. So we'll see what happens this coming Wednesday. There will be some interesting matches taking in place. So I think that's pretty much it with AW Battle of the Belts. So I think it's time to move on with our final thing, news updates. Okay, so welcome to our news updates. Now, as I mentioned, there'll be this will be a bit shorter. Now, uh, our latest update, as you know, in the promotion a section, uh, the West Coast Pro for the Ill Matter show taking place later on this month on the 27th. They announced Vinny Massario versus One Commanders, and we're only two weeks away from that pay-per-view. And I'm looking forward or hearing what's going to happen. Now, uh, this was mentioned on social media, but never in the pay-per-view in Hard to Kill in TNA. They just announced, of course, recently there will be multiple signings taking place. This was reported uh, by, uh, I don't know, if, was it Fightful Select or PW Insider? Can't remember, but they just announced a brand new signee, and it turned out to be Zaya Brookside. I was a bit of surprised on that. Now, one thing that did struck my mind about this, I was thinking, I wouldn't be surprised if Impact Wrestling decides to have a somewhat of a working relationship with stardom because if you guys know zaya brookside does have a connection with stardom i mean that could be a, a good connection to have but we will see what happens from here and out but i'm looking forward to see what zaya brookside can do now that she's stateside and she's part of the tna roster now uh back to developments on the, the well now to the developments going on in pro wrestling as you know, as I said to earlier, this is today is January 14th. Yesterday was January 14th, and it was the birthday of Chad Gaspard. Uh, if you guys remember, three year, uh, four years ago, um, he lost his life when he was attempting to save his son from drowning. Um, he put his life on the line to save his own son, and of course, many people de has declared him a hero. And Yesterday he would have been turned 43 years old, and I'm, I'm sure many of us would have loved, uh, will miss him. I mean, who can remember his time and with uh, crime time? But nonetheless, he will always be remembered for a great human being, a great father, and a husband. Moving on, um, Afa from the Wild Samoans. You may have heard uh, he and that he's. Currently recovering from the in the hospital after having pneumonia and two heart attacks. Uh, that's a bit more scary to have m multiple things going on in your health wise. But I hope he recovers well. That he is doing great. So my prayers are to him and to his entire family. Now, uh, what's this thing? what's going on here? Oh yes, uh, Pro Wrestling Noah has announced that their young boys. Um, Taishi Ozawa will be having his send-off match taking place later on this month on the 20th of January. Uh, his final opponent will be none other than the supernova Keito Kiyomiya. 
uh, but he his excursion won't be in England. Uh, I would be surprised if he appeared in uh, Progress Wrestling. That's something I'm sure because we know that Yoshiki Inamari is there too. So we'll see what that leads us from there. Uh, PW Insider reports that, um, what was his name? Ace Steel is now working with TNA. He is working as a producer. He is cur was working at the Hard to Kill as a producer himself. Uh, it's rather interesting to hear that, but nonetheless, we're glad to hear where he's at at the moment. But speaking of TNA, it was also revealed that Mercedes Monet and Bailey were at Hard to Kill. There's a photograph of them. That you can see. I think Fightful Select has a photograph of that too. So go on their social media and you'll see it. Or, or you can see it at Lucha Libre Online. Now, uh, Eddie Kingston, as you know, he's a very interesting character. Some people in the past have talked uh, shit about AW and WWE about closing their business. Eddie is the kind of person who's like saying, oh, come on, man. So this is what he had to say. And I think some of you might be like, he may be right. Uh, I'll like put it up. Uh, here it is. He said this. To me, when you sit there and say, I hope AEW closes or I hope WWE closes or whatever. To me, you're a nasty human being because people are losing their jobs. I have to agree. I mean, look. Do we really want to see these businesses close? Hell no. And Eddie Kingston has a point. That's the last thing Eddie Kingston would want to hear is people losing their jobs. So he's not wrong. Now, as you know, in recent time, Eric Bischoff has given a lot of criticism towards AEW. But it seems FTR are now defending uh, AEW. And this is what they did during an interview with Jeff Snyder. Cash Wheeler said, I think he's mad that Tony wouldn't give him a job. The few times he was there to collect a paycheck. Here comes bankruptcy number four. <laughs> and Dax goes out. I think Tony Khan gets. I don't think Tony Khan gets the credit that he deserves. Because he afford a lot of people. A lot of jobs. A lot of income. I mean even I took outside. Uh, if you look outside AW. You've got all these old time miserable podcasters like Bishop And some others who are making a living just going out podcasts and burying Tony Khan and AEW, when they're going to know that AEW is a place where business is striving. I have to say I agree. I mean, look, do we really need to hear more of trash talking about this? No. I mean, look, I think for, for these guys are saying, look, I'm glad I got a job here. So basically there's that. So I have to say these guys are not wrong. But... Nonetheless, Eric Bischoff needs to grow up. I mean, if he wanted a job with AEW, I'm sure Tony Khan has his reasons. But who knows what that is. But at the moment, I think we're done with everything else. So let's just call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode. Uh, I'm really sorry that you guys have to see me do this on the, behind me where I'm sitting in the car. I, like I said, I couldn't do this uh, because... I was caught on with the other stuff that I was going to do, but I was extremely tired, but I'm thankful I got to do this. Hopefully, I won't get to do this again, um, but I haven't decided what I'm going to do for the next episode. I know we ha I haven't seen uh, Battle of the Valley by New Japan. That is definitely going to be a priority. Uh, we do have recent GCW events. I haven't seen the latest, the early shows from both NOAA and All Japan. I'll probably make those as a priority as well. But for right now, we'll just wing it for the next episode. But for now, I will see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. And have a nice day. Bang.